Welcome to the uh, shortwave radio channel. We'll have a few videos tonight of uh, comparing and tuning around with both of these radios, uh, which are, you know, the little uh, cousins or brothers of each other. Uh, the 909X, the 909X2, as you see, they're very similar. Uh, both of them are plugged on the MLA30 through my multi-coupler. I made a little change also on the multi-coupler to make things easier for connections. I actually put the multi-coupler right there. So now I can easily connect any type of cable I need for my different radios that I'm testing. So last night I've uh, pretty much tuned around with this um, all night. I've been uh, going through different frequencies and uh, sideband and uh, checking out, you know, how they perform against each other. You see here, pretty much the same thing. Same, very similar audio. What I notice the most is that if you remove the the fact that this X2 has a few new features that were added, a slightly bigger display, a um, some bandwidths for AM mode, which are not available here, um, and the add of the air band. Um, overall, on an external antenna like I'm doing right now, uh, both are performing pretty much the same. So, um, you know, I always get this question of, well, I've got the X, should I get the X2? Um, you would answer that, I would answer that only in one way, is if you do want the X2, um, I don't think for performance there's any difference in that it should, you should, but one thing for sure is that if airband is something you'd like to have, it's, you know, it's an upgrade that can. Um, a lot of people have the impression I don't like those radios, it's not that I don't like them, it's just for the price that they're sold. The flaws, especially in the X2, the flaws that come with it are a little annoying. And you do get firmware updates, but a lot of the problems don't, won't fix themselves with firmware updates. So, you know, firmware updates are very limited in what they actually can fix in a radio. So you got to take account of that. You know, um, the biggest problem I have here is the FM breakthrough on uh, telescopic antenna doesn't happen on the outdoor antenna because the MLA-30 is not sensitive to FM frequencies. So it doesn't have a problem. But uh, once I put up that telescopic, I can't use the airband pretty much. Um, and a lot of the shortwave spectrum is full of FM breakthrough, which is sad for a radio of this price. I would not be happy if I'd paid for this thing. Uh, one thing for sure. But overall, they do perform well, and on an external antenna, they work great. Uh, the AGC isn't too bad on these radios for a single sideband. When uh, you tune a signal in single sideband, uh, it's not too bad in general. There is low audio, definitely. A lot of people complaining about that low audio on single sideband, and that is definitely, you know, compared to... Compared to the uh, X, I don't see much of a difference though. Both the X and the X2 display the same low audio on single sideband. So um, I think it's designed, it's the design that makes it like that because uh, even the X version is like that. A noticeable drop in audio on single sideband. But still, when you get a signal in single sideband, it, it, it's strong. I mean, you'll get signals that are, you know, if I go here and tune in the, uh, let's say, uh, I tune the 80 meter band, find something here.
or whatever happens. Uh, single sideband, once you have signals, isn't too bad. And same happens for the uh, 909X. Anyways, we'll compare videos tonight. Tuning the same frequency range with you know one and then the other, or uh, checking the same signal against each other. Uh, once again, I know a lot of people like that, so we'll be checking out the same GNATS 909X versus 909X2, and we'll try to add to the mix the original 909 that I have here under the uh, Radio Shack the X398 brand, and see if uh, they compare as they are far apart in their uh, in their time frame. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.